Alrighty, this is my uh, first gun review. I'm going to do it on an air gun today. This is the Baikal MP60. Uh, one of the few air guns I've not found any reviews on YouTube for. Uh, there's quite a few on the MP61, which is essentially the same gun with a uh, five shot uh, repeater capability. Uh, my decision in buying the 60 versus the 61 probably goes back to um, the mentality of uh, powder guns and the fact that the MP60 is a bolt action gun. Uh, I was really thinking, you know, along the mentality of accuracy, uh, bolt action is going to be more consistent. I, I've read a couple of reviews where people with the MP61 and bought numerous clips and some clips weren't shooting good. Uh, the the more I study the gun, I really don't understand it because what, what happens is the only difference between the 60 and the 61 is right across here where the bolt goes, which drives the pellet into the chamber, is where your five shot clip uh, feeds your ammo. Uh, the, the way the gun works, I really don't understand why you'd see a variance in accuracy from the 60 to the 61. That in mind, uh, maybe I should have bought the 60, 61 rather. Um, I'm presuming if you're watching this video, you kind of know what uh, Baikal and the, their air rifle is about. Uh, it's about a $100 air rifle. It has a lot of great reviews on the internet as far as a low priced gun with um, quite remarkable accuracy for the price range it's in. Uh, the gun is by no means a hunting gun, uh, primarily a 10 meter target gun. Uh, I bought this one from Pyramid Air as a refurb. Uh, about a hundred bucks. Uh, bought enough stuff to get it over 150 at which point they give free shipping and pretty darn fast. Um, ordered it on a Monday night and had it in my hands on a Friday, Thursday morning. Uh, run a little bit of ammo through it. And, uh, I gotta say I'm really impressed. Uh, lives up to everything I've heard about it as far as the accuracy goes. I've tried uh, not a ton of pellets but quite a few groups. Uh, a lot of people said they were having great luck with the uh, RWS uh, Meister Coogan 8.2 gram match pellet. Uh, so far the big winner in mine, these guys right here, the H&N uh, match rifle. A little less expensive, almost identical in weight, just a hair heavier, or I'm sorry, a hair lighter than the uh, Meister Coogan uh, got a feeling it might be breech diameter. Haven't checked it out carefully yet. Uh, let's go over the good parts of the gun. As I said, accurate-ish. Uh, the uh, Russian company that produces this, uh, primarily a Russian military firearms manufacturer. Uh, very good reputation in Russia. You might equate them with... Uh, Maybe a Remington or Winchester in the U.S. is kind of the equivalent of what uh, Ish by Cal is over in the USSR. Uh, interesting looking gun. Certainly, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, futuristic Russian uh, from the 60s or something. It, it, I certainly didn't buy it for the looks. I personally like a, a more traditional looking piece of weaponry and I like wood and things. I'm not a big fan of synthetics, but uh, for the money I had to try one of these out. And Like I said, it's really lived up uh, to the accuracy thing. Uh, trigger on these, uh, it's adjustable. The earlier models had three-way adjustment. Uh, this one, or the newer ones here, where they went to more composite pieces, uh, the only adjustment left on it uh, is a single screw. 
if we can get in on there for a uh, over travel stop I haven't touched it uh, probably a lighter trigger than any rifle you'll find out of the box in the US uh, probably those high Russian safety standards uh, <laughs> That this gun would never fly in the U.S. as a over-the-counter day-to-day item. You're never going to find it in a Walmart. Uh, beyond the light trigger, you'll notice there is absolutely no kind of safety. Uh, the other oddity here, uh, of course, the bite kale is a uh, side-cocking gun. Uh, the other little trick it does when you go through the cocking mechanism, it pushes the bolt open. You completely cock the... Uh, side lever here. I'm not going to do it now. When you close that back up, because it has pushed the bolt open, that is the point you have to go about dropping your pellet in and closing the bolt. Which means you are closing the bolt on a charged gun that has, I wouldn't call it a hair trigger, but a light trigger and no safety. So I'd hate to think what would happen should something bad happen at that particular moment when you're loading it. Uh, my Cal has an adjustable stock uh, through here. Slides in and out. And I'm going to leave mine alone right now. There's also two positions inside, a forward position and a back position. Gives you about an extra inch of adjustability which gives you a length of pull on the short side about 12 inches on the long side about 14 and a half uh, great that it's adjustable the thing you'll notice here though and is uh, if you get to the short side in other words uh, pushing this out to its full length the further you're out, the more that screw is going to be able to go in and tighten up. When you're all the way in on the short side here, it doesn't leave a heck of a lot of thread into that bolt down here. Excuse my camera work while I do this one-handed. Uh, this little bolt here is what catches it to hold it, and that's the forward position of it. Now what I'm saying is when, when I've got the bolt in that forward position. There's not much thread catching that thing at all. Barely a couple of turns. Uh, when it's in the further back position, of course, it's going to see quite a bit deeper. Get full depth of thread. Hold on tight. So you might want to keep that in mind with one of these. Work with the position that you're getting the, the best amount of bite. There's probably some overlap in those two positions there. Um, other things that were good and not so good about the gun, uh, sights from the factory. Uh, kind of a letdown here, steel adjustable sight. Right there is a detented windage screw. Uh, pretty darn good actually as far as the windage, or as far as elevation. Now as far as windage, you've got to turn these two tiny little screws in and out and slide that blade back and forth for windage. I'm not a big fan of that. Also the front sight, not a fan of it all. Uh, probably intended as more of a, a diopter unit. Uh, they sell a target model of this thing. About exactly as much with the diopter included as uh, what it would cost you to buy a diopter. That's probably the preferred sight on here. Uh, I'm going to try to do something about hanging a scope on this. But the uh, upper rail here is a composite piece. That's an 11 millimeter dovetail machined in on the top. Uh, certainly you still have to get in here to load ammo. So a scope on the top, unless you go to a very high ring. Uh, that's going to make that a little problematic and also I'm not a big fan of uh, a springer and trying to hold this on here tight enough onto a composite rail. Um, going to have some experimenting coming up in that department for sure. Um, again, Great little gun for the money, though, so far. I'm very impressed. Uh, I'm not one to leave my guns alone, so the first thing I'm going to do 
is probably this piece from right about here, Mac, this piece of plastic. I think I'm going to duplicate this in aluminum, get myself just a, about another half inch length of pole, 15 inch length of pole is ideal for me as a shooter. So that's what I want to go with. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off on that though until I have whatever optics I'm going to get in place on this. Uh, first idea that's really coming to mind is removing the uh, stock rear sight using this piece of flat here and mounting a True Glow uh, adjustable on it. Probably something intended for a rib barrel and maybe incorporate this little flat surface that's underneath it to grab that, do away with this piece here from the diopter ring sight and maybe lay the uh, uh, true glow up here and, and try and get a little cleaner sight picture uh, to remove this thing and here's an added bonus of the bike cal I, this is on the 60, I can't fa say for sure the 61 same way I assume it is it's threaded on the end so if you want to add a muzzle brake or any other little accessories you might have in mind uh, that part's already done for you. Very few air rifles I've seen with that. Also, the crown is very deeply recessed. It's all the way back, uh, point of reference, right about where my fingernail is, about where the crown lies in this thing. So the, the crown's set way back in there. I keep tip tested it. The crown looks good. So I'm impressed with that. Uh, on the parts that are still metal on this one, the, the blue work is as nice as any production powder firearm I've seen. Uh, I, I'd love to find one of the older ones that had uh, the uh, metal receiver and I, I heard the older ones had more and more metal parts. Also used to have a three-way adjustable trigger that had uh, adjustments for over travel, trigger position front to rear as well as uh, trigger pull adjustment on it. Uh, somebody got one of those that they want to part with, by all means, look me up. Uh, other than that, for, uh, got a hundred bucks, uh, can't go wrong. Pretty cool little piece of air rifle here. Certainly different than everybody who's got a gamble or something's going to have. And, uh, for a 10 meter target shooting, uh, I've got a bunch of friends. We get together and do a lot of that kind of thing. I, I think this is really going to hold its own even against some much higher priced guns. Uh, I'd say actually it would probably shoot against some high dollar PCP guns and do pretty darn respectable and, and certainly against any Springer gun as far as accuracy in the groups I've seen so far it's been awesome. Uh, hopefully in the next day or two I'll do a little more ammo testing, get some uh, crony numbers, things like that for you. And, Start a few modifications, keep you updated as we do up the Bicel IZH MP60. Thanks for watching. Bye.